right, guys, so what we're doing, as you can see, we are off of the bridges. Like I said before, our bridge trilogy of showcasing the bridges and these dockside TVs. Probably gonna take a break from that. Water temperatures are warming up even more as we get into the latter part of the spring. Fishing some shorelines. What we like to look for on these shorelines is, is just bait. Typically it's mullet and pogies. Seeing some mullet flick in the background. If you ever see mullet rafting real hard, that's when you want to get here at daylight, throw the top water. But if you have any kind of mullet activity, go with a mullet colored up bait. I got the Matrix Shad Midnight Mullet, one of the original three Matrix Shads that were ever created. That's what we're using today. And we're starting the day off with a nice 15 inch speckled trout. Let's see if we can get on a roll on some shoreline fishing. When we're fishing these shorelines, it's pretty simple. Just want to put the wind to your back. You don't really want to go against the wind where you got to use the trolling motor a lot. That's never a good thing. You want to be as stealthy and quiet as you can. You know, we're only, we're only fishing two to five foot of water. It's not like the bridges where you can be loud if you want to. You want to make light little steps when you're moving around in a boat. We learn a lot of these little silent tricks when we're fishing Florida. You want to be as stealthy as you can when you fish in shallow water. Long cast, maybe a little bit lighter line. You can use a different Whenever you're fishing these shorelines, you can drop it down to either a quarter, five sixteenths, golden eye jig head. That's what we're doing today. It's got snagged right there. Put a new one on again. Same, we use them, we use this knot almost religiously. It's the polymer. Double it over, overhand knot, put, the, put it through the access loop. Flip the tag in. Here's the midnight mullet, which is gonna be the bait of choice today. Just trying to match the hatch. Something with a little mullet hue to it. Come in half an inch, try to stay right down the middle. You want it to be as straight as possible. Make them long, long casts. Shallow water, long casts. I want to use a little bit longer rod, seven footers and such. Is that him? Do I have him? See, oh, this fish must be tiny. Look at this fish, guys. I didn't even know. Oh, I didn't even know if I still had one. Barely bent the rod. Fish is skinny and little. All right, uh, that means means there's a few here, maybe a little school. Oh, he tattooed it. Tattooed it. Hope they're not all small. You do things like this, just a slow reel if you want. When you're fishing just three or four foot, your lure's always gonna be close to the bottom. That's why you can use jerk baits, popping corks, top waters. Not as important as we preach on the trestle and, and the bridges that you gotta let the bait get to the bottom every time. It's a good little school of fish right up there. If I could hook them, it'd be nice. If I could hook them. Yeah, they in there attacking my matrix mullet. I can't hook them. Let's see here. Oh my goodness, they must be tiny. fish is decent, I think. Uh, 
maybe not. Maybe not. Might stretch. It's close. We'll let him go now. The reason I picked this shoreline today, hey, like I said, it's a little bit warmer. I like to start targeting some shoreline fishing. The bridges and all, still very good. Lots of boats over there now. Really, these, when you get on these shorelines and Pontchartrain, you can really get away from the boats. Sometimes you bump into some really big fish, especially if you can find the mullets. Right now we're on some smaller fish. But anyway, the reason I picked it, we got a westerly wind. It's well known in Lake Pontchartrain. You don't fish the lake on a west wind, which is somewhat true. Uh, it really puts a big swell wave into the bridges. Um, it makes the lake dirty very fast, very easy. But these, some of these shorelines protect themselves from a west wind. You know, you can, do, you can still do a lot of things on a west wind. One of my favorite things to do on a west wind is to um, go fit, hit the rigs in Lake Bourne, especially the ones closer to the western shoreline. All you need to do on west winds is fish areas that are protected from a west wind. So when I was coming across the lake this morning, I was in that ground swell on the west wind. I looked down and could tell that water was a little milky. Didn't really know I wanted to go, but when I saw that, nine out of ten times, if I have a west wind, I could find, fish the shoreline like this and find clean water, which I did. You can see how calm it is. Get to stay in some calm waters, clean waters, and catch some fish. Well, we moseyed up the shoreline of here. Ooh, just got that one in the boat. We started up to the east of ways, and we were catching them little rascals. So we got left them alone, just started going down the bank. Didn't have much action for a while. Just busted that one right there. Coming up to a point here, I can see the current wrapping around it. And that's the kind of stuff you got to look for is little contour changes, current lines. Um, just, you know, when you find, when you see current coming around a point, that's always like an extremely great zone you want to target and focus in on. So just caught that one, had a bite right before. Let's see if there's a school of them here. Tell me it's the little ones again. It's like right when you pull up, you catch one or two decent ones. That one wasn't but about 10 inches. One or two decent ones, and then boom, it turns into these little dinks. We never had to used to worry about throwbacks in the lake too much, but ever since they closed that mist ago, throwbacks are a heck of a lot more common. So get some nice fish, as you saw in our later one of our Flatter episodes, we caught a big one. That was another small fish there. Caught a six pounder a few weeks ago. The bridges are extremely great place to catch a trophy fish, but I just really enjoy getting away and doing different things whenever, uh, whenever I can. Well, there is a lot of fish down there, but God, it is like not big ones, it's like the same class of fish that we were on earlier. Here we go. That one might stretch. That one might stretch. Gotta just fight through the throwbacks to get to the keepers. You can see this point right here. What we're doing, we're just throwing up towards it. They got some current breaking around that point. We're letting it just sweep with the current, trying to make it look as natural for these fish as we can. That's what the fish will do. They'll use points to hide, let the current move bait around, and then they'll ambush it. They want to be as lazy as they can. They want to use anything to their advantage. It's always good to find shorelines with 
bayous, cuts, points, dips, coves, just a straight shoreline typically isn't a good thing to fish. There's just no abnormalities to it and very hard to hone in on a school of fish. This is a good one. See, this is what's crazy is you're on these dink, dink, dinks, and then you hit a solid two pound fish like this. That's why you gotta just keep moving till you find the right breed. That's the breed we're looking for. We'll take them 16, 17 inches all day. You got him chomping down on that midnight mullet. Just throw it right here on this point. Got a few fish right here. There he is. Is he close? Yeah, he's close. I'll let him go. I mean, these fish are, the ones that are throwbacks, they're right on the line. Want to make long casts, get it up to those points. When you find a school of fish, last thing you want to do is let the boat push up or blow up on to where you're catching them. So you, you just want to stay real far off, keep making those long, long casts to them, inch up to them a little bit closer if you need to, but try to stay as far out as you can. three bites on that cast, let a matrix mullet's pulled down like that. Midnight mullet, shall I say. I don't even think I gotta jig it. I might just try some reeling, reeling and stopping. So this is another technique you can use whenever you're fishing shallower water. Let it get to the bottom. Oh shoot, that fish was on it before it even hit the bottom. Look at him coming out the water. That's a head shaker. Another beautiful fish. This is a nice one here, guys. That's, a good one. That's the size we're looking for, baby. Dink, 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 two and a half pounder. Dink, 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 two, two pounder. We're gonna just wiggle through them, fight through them. Choke that midnight mullet down. Beautiful fish. Oh, a little rascal. Yeah, this one's pretty close to 12. And since we're getting some nice ones mixed in, let's let the little ones go. Not even worth measuring them. Get a few, few of the nicer ones to eat. Bait the crab traps, let the rascals go. Let them go, let them grow. Well, that wind's really died down here. The gnats are starting to get after me. Now the wind's laying up. I can look across the lake. You can fish anywhere you want in the lake. It's still gonna be chalky on that north shore where that west-southwest wind was blowing from, but we'll just sit right here in the shoreline all by ourselves. And catch us some uh some of these speckles, speckle bellies. No one around. Throw that one back. Got 
had the whole shoreline to ourselves. I know if we went to the bridge, that would not be the case. Not the case at all. here. I can feel him stretching that line out. Stretching that line out. Started throwing way off the point out in the middle of the lake. Maybe these fish are a little bit bigger. Good one right there. Just get different classes, different sizes of fish all the time. You could be on a school every cast, the 10 to 13 inches, you move over 100 yards and it's all 14 to 18 inches like this one here. Just gotta move around till you find what you want. But if you're getting bites and a lot of bites in an area, I wouldn't leave it just cause they're small. You might just need to slide around a little bit, find a better crop of fish. That means that they're in this area, the forge is here, the food's here, the tide's right. They like, they like being here. Another good fish. These bigger ones are out. Shake that head, baby. Walked that one all the way in, shaking his head. He is not happy. With that midnight mullet down his throat. Open up. Show him. Open up. He don't like that. That's why they call him yellow mouse. They come up and shake that head, and all you see is that yellow when it's a nicer fish. This is far from a trophy, but a quality one. Look at this. We come off the bank. We were catching all them dinks all morning come off the shoreline of here and now we're on this fish is borderline nettable i'm gonna net him just to be careful now we're catching beautiful trout oh i'm glad i netted him look where the lure's at fish hits the net Lure hits the net also. That, I could see that midnight mullet sticking out his mouth. A lot of people ask like, well, when, what size fish do you net? I mean, it's not always about the size. It's if I could see a lot of the lure sticking out his mouth, that means he's barely hooked. I get that net out for one of this size, which isn't the giant in the world, but he's definitely the giant of the day. But if he had that, that lure choked, then it's not so bad. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. All right, guys, well, we gotta go ahead and close it out here. Got enough for dinner. Went through the little ones, got some nice ones. Here's a decent one. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV. You want to fish some shorelines, drop it down from the heavy jig heads to the lighter jig heads, like a quarter and a five sixteenths. Pick you up some matrix or get your hands on some midnight mullet in the matrix shed. Catch some shoreline fish. Make sure to subscribe to the monthly bait box. Get out here. Try your hand at some shoreline fishing. This is a heck of a lot easier than the bridge fishing. But if you want it, try to catch a big one like we did on the last episode. Go check it out, Fishing Highway 11. We catch one of the biggest trout we've caught in a long time. Just check out our last episode. Until next time, good fishing.